Every family's got them. Stories. Stories of relatives who did things. Things to family, things to friends, things to business rivals or teachers or even rivals in love. Every family's got them. Stories about people who were at least at one time in their lives pretty rotten. My family has a collection of such characters. Uh, some of you have heard a few of these before. When legitimate places like boobies were going under during Prohibition, my family was making money with clubs. You know, those kind of clubs where you had to know a certain knock or, or a code word to get in. Part of my family on the other side has the same last name, Beardsley. And there were two Beardsley brothers, and one of them stole a pig. Now the problem was he got caught. And the innocent brother was so upset with him, he actually changed the spelling of his last name. I have relatives who were good Baptists that had a huge orchard and lots of cider barrels in their basement. They weren't such good Baptists. I have another uncle who was thrown out of school because he put a dead skunk in his locker. Yeah, he was going to school, and there's that dead skunk laying by the side of the road. He picked it up, he carried it to school, he threw it in his locker, took the staff a while to find it. But you see, that pelt back then, that was worth a quart. I've got another uncle. Well, he's kind of more of a, an adopted uncle. He's not really a blood relative. And he was courting his wife, okay? And he's courting his wife, and another one of his friends is courting her at the same time. But they're all friends, and so they go rabbit hunting together. And one day while they're rabbit hunting, well, my adopted uncle shot the competition. <laughs> now, fortunately it was rabbit shot, and I guess not in a legal place, but funny thing, the competition stopped right there. Hmm. We all got it. They're the stories you hear when you get together for a wedding or if you get together to say goodbye to a loved one. And a lot of times when the people involved in these stories hear them, they kind of give you that wave and they head off because they've heard it before. They don't need to hear it again. And besides, they've changed now. They're different. It's like Bill Cosby once said about his mom late in life. He said, that is not the woman who, married, who raised me. No, that's an old woman trying to get into heaven. <laughs> In the Bible, we have a word for these people. These people who were usually on our side, but who did kind of nasty and sneaky things. And the word for it is trickster. And trickster characters are all over religious literature. But when you come to our faith, and when you come to our scripture, there is no bigger trickster character around than this guy, Jacob. Now, Jacob, as we probably all remember, was the grandson of Abraham. He was the son of Isaac. And he, of course, was the one who would be given a new name by God, the name that would become the symbol of the Jewish people. Israel. And when you hear that, you think, wow, he must have been awesome. <laughs> oh yeah, he was awesome. He was sneaky, self-centered, jealous, disobedient, and downright nasty. He relied mostly on his own wits. He very rarely reached out to God. In fact, I think he's only bested by Samson in the Bible for his lack of prayer life. And it all started at birth. Jacob was the second of Isaac's twin sons, and his name literally means ankle grabber, because he was trying to get out first. He was trying to be the firstborn. But his big, strong brother Esau beat him in that race, and got all the benefits of being firstborn brought with him. So as Jacob started to get older, and Isaac just started to get old, Jacob began conniving to get what he wanted. He wanted to be head of the family, and that meant he would need his father's 
blessing. Now, Brother Esau was big, hairy, and strong. He was a great hunter and fighter. Jacob was a mama's boy. And he was downright soft. But mama did like him best. And mama wanted him to have the blessing. And that brings us to what we have here. Today's reading is from Genesis chapter 27. When Isaac was old and his eyes were dim so that he could not see, he called his elder son Esau and said to him, My son. And he answered, Here I am. He said, See, I am old. I do not know the day of my death. Now then, take your weapons, your quiver and your bow, and go out to the field and hunt for game. Then prepare for me savory food such as I like, and bring it to me to eat, so that I may bless you before I die. Then Rebecca took the best garments of her elder son Esau, which were with her in the house, and put them on her younger son Jacob. And she put the skins of the kids on his hands and on the smooth part of his neck. Then she handed the savory food and the bread that she had prepared to her son Jacob. So he went in to his father and said, My father, and he said, Here I am. Who are you, my son? Jacob said to his father, I am Esau, your firstborn. I have done as you told me. Now sit up and eat of my game, so that you may bless me. But Isaac said to his son, How is it that you have found it so quickly, my son? He answered, Because the Lord God granted me success. Then Isaac said to Jacob, Come near that I may feel you, my son, to know whether you are really my son Esau or not. So Jacob went up to his father Isaac, who felt him and said, The voice is Jacob's voice, but the hands are the hands of Esau. He did not recognize him, because his hands were hairy like his brother Esau's hands, so he blessed him. Thank you, Jess. Remember when I was listing Jacob's qualities? I left out, took advantage of the handicapped. So Jacob gets this blessing. And Esau? Well, Esau's ticked. And far from becoming the head of the family, Jacob has to run for his life. You know, it's hard to believe how terrible we can be to each other. I, I know a lot of times in life, evil happens, and it's really the result of a mistake. It wasn't intentional, but there are so many times when the evil side of human beings kind of takes over and the results are catastrophic. The hard part is, even though life has always been like this. Now every horror that occurs in the world seems to get displayed instantly before us. What was Jacob thinking? What was he thinking? Was his father this horrible to him? Was his brother really that undeserving? What made him think he could do such a thing? And remember that at this point in history, a blessing, it could only be given once. And it was like a living, breathing thing, a blessing or an oath. Once it was made, it was believed it just went out there and did its living, breathing thing until it found a way to make what was said true. Kind of makes you understand why we call someone the living word of God, huh? It also makes you understand why Esau wanted Jacob dead. He didn't want that blessing to have anywhere to go. Jacob stole the blessing, the greatest gift his father had to give. The greatest promise that would have ever been given to his brother. And as happens, every time an atrocity occurs, Jacob robbed each of these men of some of their command by placing himself above them 
He forgot that they too were created in the image of God. And as a result, he insulted God as well in the process. Frankly, he deserved to die. And I think he knew it. But this is what happened. Jacob left Beersheba and went towards Haran. He came to a certain place and stayed there for the night, because the sun had set. Taking one of the stones of the place, he put it under his head and lay down in that place. And he dreamed that there was a ladder set up on the earth, the top of it reaching to heaven. And the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. And the Lord stood beside him and said, I am the Lord the God of Abraham your father, and the God of Isaac, the land on which you lie I will give to you and to your offspring. And your offspring shall be like the dust of the earth. And you shall spread abroad to the west and to the east and to the north and to the south. And all the families of the earth shall be blessed in you and in your offspring. Know that I am with you and will keep you wherever you go and will bring you back to this land. For I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. Then Jacob woke from his sleep and said, Surely the Lord is in this place. And I did not know it. And he was afraid and said, How awesome is this place. This is none other than the house of God. And this is the gate of the heaven. Jacob gets the blessing. Jacob gets the promise that his father and that his father's father before him received. Jacob's given a vision and an assurance that this blessing will come true, even as, and I think it is the end of international talk like a pirate week, even as he is a scurvy dog. Now, it wasn't going to be easy. And by the way, Easter was blessed continually throughout their lives. He, he got all kinds of blessing as well. Jacob's life was actually going to be a lot harder. Jacob was about to take a path that was going to make a real man out of him. He was going to become the husband of two of his cousins. That kind of thing happened a lot back then. And his father-in-law and uncle Laban, well, let's just say in Laban, Jacob was going to meet his evil match. Laban put him through the ringer. But Jacob would grow, Jacob would change, and Jacob would get a new name and become the father of a great nation. Because God's promise was there for him. Even as he did not deserve it. Just as God's promise is there for us, even when we don't, and maybe we don't ever, Pope Francis said something, I think it was this week, and I think it fits with our struggle to understand why God would bless this rotten guy, Jacob, or why God would even bless the rotten likes of me or you. Francis said, I have a dogmatic certainty. God is in every person's life. God is in everyone's life, even if the life of that person has been a disaster, even if it is destroyed by vices, drugs, or anything else, God is in this person's life. You can, you must try to seek God in every human life. Although the life of a person is a land full of thorns and weeds, there's always a space where the good seed can grow. You have to trust. May we all trust a little bit more. Trust God to let that good seed grow in our friends and neighbors. Trust God to let that good seed grow in us. <laughs>